I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. Enemies of the state. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. Do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless. When they go low, we kick How do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? The biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them radicalized right up to the right. I thought he should have punched him in the face. I said, even if you lost, he insulted your wife. Yes. He came down the escalator and called Mexicans rapists and murders. He said, well, what do you think I should have done? I said, I think you should have punched him in the face and then gotten out of the race. And, you would have uh, been a hero. I'd like to punch him in the face. I said, if we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. Punch some people in the face. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump, and that's a fact. Look as his character is stabbed to death. Where is John Wilkes Booth when you need him? I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. A Missouri state senator is under investigation by the Secret Service after saying she hopes President Trump is assassinated. I will go and take Trump out tonight. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution uh, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. They're not going to stop before Election Day in November, and they're not going to stop after Election Day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't, they're not going to let up, and they should not. If you think we're rallying now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Escalated to the point that uh, they executed my partner. Jeez. They hunted him down. They hunted us down. They recognized our Patriot Prayer hats. For anybody who doesn't know Patriot Prayer, Joey Gibson, the citizen's advocate, is a good man. We support him. He's a Christian and conservative. Um, so they identified our hats. We've got a couple of them right here. We've got a couple of them right here. Pull it out. Pull it out. And uh, is that what they said? that's what they said. We turned around. I didn't even it didn't even register that somebody was pointing a gun at us until the shots went off and took off running. The and shooter took off running. The shooter took off running. And uh, you, you know, you did, it takes a second for you to process everything that happened. You know, you did he just shoot at me? Okay. I'm okay. Turn over and Jay's dead. Because he believes something different than He's not a racist, he's not a xenophobe or whatever label, he's not an ist or an ism. He's an independent man. And he's a good man. And he didn't do anything to earn a bullet in the chest. If you could ask anything right now, Donald Trump, what would it be? Send troops. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Take a second to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. That's usually where my best day-to-day -day takes are. But anyways, as we all know by this point, uh, the other night in Portland, Oregon, a Trump supporter was targeted and executed by a member of Antifa in cold blood. And so what you saw there in the beginning was a series of clips that provide some context and a timeline for how we got to where we are now. And then also an interview with the friend of the man who was there uh, when he was killed. And that man's name was Aaron Danielson, also known as Jay. But to Joe Biden, he's just the Trump guy, right? And that's all that he'll ever be to the left. 
Uh, you know, maybe the more honest ones will label him as a fascist and, and then celebrate his murder. So just remember, when a death is politically convenient to the left, we have to say their name. We have to protest in mass. We have to enact change now. But when it isn't, then it just doesn't matter. He's just the Trump guy. And they'll use their media to claim that the Antifa murderer was just acting in self-defense or even to prop up and humanize him so he can spread what was effectively his suicide note and manifesto to the world. So we're going to talk about what happened. We're going to break down uh, the interview that the murderer did with Vice Media. And then we're going to talk about what all this means for us. And I can tell you, it's not good, but it's nothing that we didn't expect. So basically, last Saturday, a bunch of Trump supporters planned to drive their trucks and wave their American flags and their Trump flags in Portland. And of course, that did not sit well with the Antifa and Black Lives Matter rioters. And so this culminated with Aaron Danielson being shot and killed in cold blood by one of these Antifa people, whose name I won't use because his goal was to become a martyr, uh, which is what led him to get himself killed last night in a shootout with police. But we'll get to that in a second. First, I want to show you a video that was captured of the shooting, and I'll put arrows and subtitles on it, and then I'll show you another version that has been stabilized and zoomed in so you'll see this antifa guy approach the trump guy uh, the trump guy appears to try to like pepper spray him or something and then he gets shot point blank in the chest and then he dies while the murderer runs away so take a look <laughs> Now, as you can see, there is virtually no argument for self-defense. It simply doesn't exist. But that's just what you and I would think when watching this and probably even what most people would think. But what if I told you that we can subjectively define self-defense? This is where it starts to get scary, and we're going to get in deeper with that in a second. But remember how the media treated Kyle Rittenhouse for shooting people that were trying to beat him to death and take his rifle from him? Remember how they labeled him a gunman? Remember how they called him a white supremacist terrorist? Now... Compare that to this. Compare that to the media just calling this guy a suspect in a fatal shooting. Compare Facebook banning all support for Kyle Rittenhouse to Vice Media putting this guy on for an interview to platform and humanize him and allow him to spread his message. The guy who killed a Trump supporter is giving interviews to Vice Media five days after the murder takes place, all while Kyle Rittenhouse was immediately put in jail and charged with first degree murder. You know, we used to look at stuff like this double standards like this. We used to say, wow, the left says this, but they do this. Come on, guys, have some principles. And even now, a lot of conservative activism is just going like, wow, real classy guys whenever the left does something. And so I think it's time that we recognize that it's not just that they're hypocrites. It's actually much worse than that because it's that they're directly enabling people to harm and even kill people like us. They want you dead. It's not hyperbole. That's a fact. Now let's talk about the Antifa guy. He was actually there the night before when people were harassing and damaging the mayor's apartment, and we can see him earlier there that night uh, when people were getting beat up by the mob, but he also posted on his Instagram last June that he was 100% Antifa all the way, and he also advocated for using violence against police officers and basically anyone who goes against their worldview, and he said that he would do anything necessary to help their cause. He said that it's a war and a revolution, and like all wars and revolutions, people are needed to fight. And don't mistake that for normal rhetoric that's meant to excite people. Like, that's literally a call to violence. These leftists don't just obsess over the violent communist revolutions throughout history and then aspire to do the same thing here except with no violence. Like to them it's worth it. And in a revolution there is no time for the marketplace of ideas or civil discussions. They just prefer to kill you. It'd be easier. And he alludes to this in the interview with Vice Media. He uses a lot of coded language and it's actually very chilling so we'll go through that now and break it down. I had no choice. I mean, I, I, I had a choice. I could have sat there and watched them kill a friend of mine of color. But I wasn't going to do that. You know, that, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Notice that he has the Black Lives Matter fist tattooed on his neck. That's a symbol that dates back to as early as 1914 when it was described as a symbol of social revolution and it was adopted by the German Communist Party in 1924. And we all think of that as a symbol for black power, which it is, but we also have to remember that those movements throughout the 20th century were also heavily driven by Marxists. And so more broadly speaking, it's just a symbol of communist revolution, which even makes sense today since Black Lives Matter is run by Marxists. Also, when he says that he had no choice and that his friend of color was going to die, what do you think he means by that? He says things like that throughout the interview, and so, you know, we might as well just assume that he's lying. But the scary thing is that he's not actually lying. He's just setting a new standard within the context of violence and self-defense for truth as subjective. And this is dangerous. And you might think, well, what's the difference between lying and saying something that isn't true? And that's a good question. So, you know, just, just watch as he keeps going. 
My name is Michael Forrest Rynell, born and raised in Portland, Oregon, 48 years old. You know, lots of lawyers suggest that I shouldn't even be saying anything, but I feel it's important that the world at least gets a little bit of what's really going on because there's been a lot of propaganda put out there. Um, what I will say is that I felt that my life and other people around me's lives were in danger. And I felt like I had no choice but to do what I did. This is what I was talking about. He's using coded language. He said, I felt like my life and other people's lives around me were in danger and that I had no choice but to do what I did. Those are his words. He doesn't say that the man pulled a gun on him. He doesn't say that he was being attacked physically because that's not what he means. What he means is that the political opinions of the man he murdered were dangerous to the existence of people like him and the people around him. Therefore, to murder this man is actually, in a way, self-defense. That is what he means. He means that to disagree on policy poses a danger to the existence of certain people. Therefore, it's okay for him to act in self-defense by killing people who hold those beliefs. And if you think that's crazy, it's really not. Like, it, it's completely logical. I mean, it makes sense coming from them. But what it actually is is evil. It's immoral. But when you're operating within a coalition that doesn't believe in objective morality or the value of human life, there can be no such thing as agree to disagree. Their purpose is not to achieve human flourishing and to have a worldview that best facilitates that. No, their purpose is their worldview. And if you and I stand in the way of that, then we can be killed because our flourishing and our lives don't matter. And he gets more into this as the interview continues. I used to really love this country and I respected the flag and everything that it represented. But because of all this, every time I see a big truck, especially with the flag on it, I immediately think that they're out to get me. He says out to get me like that to establish the context and justification for self-defense as if Trump supporters are pulling people out of their cars and beating them within an inch of their lives, kind of like what his people are doing instead of just driving around, waving Trump flags, trying to get a reaction and be loud. It was a free for all and the police were letting it happen. Right after it happened, what did you, did you panic? Did you run? Well, honestly, you know, those are a bit of details I probably don't want to get into other than just simply saying that, you know, I realized what had happened. I was confident that I did not hit anyone innocent. And I made my exit. You okay? You okay. And, and just to reiterate, you feel that it was totally justified? Totally justified. Had I not acted, I am confident that my friend and I'm sure I would have been killed because I wasn't going to stand there and let something happen. I am confident that I didn't hit anyone innocent. That doesn't mean that he didn't hit anyone who wasn't posing an immediate physical threat to him. That just means that if you support Trump or Blue Lives Matter, then you are not innocent. That is precisely what he means by that, and that's precisely what the left believes. Maybe they're not all violent, sure, but they're still complicit in this because they cover it up and they enable it because they know that it helps them achieve their agenda. Look at the way they cheered when they found out that a Trump supporter was executed in cold blood, or excuse me, in self-defense, because he had pepper spray or something once the Antifa guy stepped in front of him with a gun before running away and they even asked him in the interview did you run and totally dodged it the only reason he came forward is because people ID'd him and then he thought he'd use the opportunity to spread his message and become a martyr before going suicide by cop mode but anyways watch how they cheer for the murder of someone like us someone who's just a conservative but in their eyes a fascist even though they couldn't tell you the difference and so you have to die uh, because they're f stupid and godless and have no purpose in life and tonight, I just got word, the person who died was a patriot head person. Yeah. He was a fucking Nazi. Our community held its own and took out the trash. I am not going to shed any tears over a Nazi. Y'all are not angry, you're not paying attention. If y'all are not angry, you're not with me. Everybody needs to realize what's going on in these streets. Our community can, our community can hold its own without the police. We can take out the trash on our own. I am not sad that a fucking fascist died tonight. <laughs> Listen to them cheer. That could be about any one of you. 
And I tweeted this out not too long ago, which is why you should go follow me on Twitter. But I said that being on the right means you'll invariably be called racist. But if you dare to also be socially conservative, you'll be a fascist too. This implies that their biggest critique of fascism is that they probably wouldn't be allowed to be so gay. This actually makes a lot of sense, not to get all Antifa are the real fascists, but it's not like they'd have a problem arresting people for dissenting speech or mobilizing supporters to commit violence against them. It really just comes down to being evangelically gay, LMAO. Additionally, if you really break it down, the elements of fascism which overlap with conservatism, opposition to communism, social conservatism, nationalism, are much less harmful than those which overlap with the current state of the left, godlessness, political violence, etc. Me, marriage is between a man and a woman. Leftist, okay, fascist, I'm gonna come find you and kill you. And that's where we are right now. If you're a conservative with any convictions, you're a fascist and your existence poses a threat. Therefore, your death is not only justified, but it's preferable. This is what people were saying on Twitter after the Antifa guy died last night because he pulled a gun on the police when they tried to arrest him. This guy had a bad history with guns anyways. Uh, he was arrested for illegally possessing a loaded gun at one of those events earlier in the summer, but Portland police released him on July 5th, which is how he was free to kill Aaron Danielson. And so... Um, his name was trending on Twitter last night, and I'll show you some of the tweets that were displayed up front from uh, this one account that were relatively popular. The first one says, As one reads the glee in which fascists are celebrating the killing of Michael by police in what may very well have been an execution, it becomes increasingly difficult to ignore that which must be done to fight against and ultimately defeat fascism. And that just means that the only way for them to be successful is just to kill us. It'd be a lot easier that way. And I don't mean us like us fascists, but the problem is that they're so stupid and so evil that anyone who disagrees with them is a fascist. So yeah, like go ahead and kill them, right? Like I get called a fascist by people online all the time, and it's because they want to get me deplatformed. They know that I'm not a fascist, but they'll come up with these really schizophrenic theories like, oh, the Pioneer mug is designed as a dog whistle for the apartheid flag in South Africa, and the Boers viewed themselves as pioneers. Damn, he's good with his dog whistles. And I almost want to go with that, because it's funnier than the actual story, which is that there was this clip of Alex Jones screaming, I'm a pioneer, I'm an explorer, I'm a human, like just going off like he does. I'm a pioneer, I'm an explorer. I'm a human, and I'm coming. I'm animated. My heart's big. I like to eat. I like to fight. I like to f I like to have children. I got a life force. I like to eat children. I'm a throwback. I'm setting fires everywhere. So back in like 2016, that was a meme, and my friends and I would be yelling that at each other in the hallways. And so for my 17th birthday, my girlfriend at the time gave me this mug that she drew on. Uh, she made it red, white, and blue because America, and then she wrote Pioneer because of the meme. And so when I was thinking of props for the desk, I was like, oh, you know, that mug would be kind of cool. But we're not actual people to them. Like, we can't be humanized like that. I could get killed by one of these people for having that mug, which to me is just a funny knickknack because they've decided for me that I'm this evil figure. And the reason for that is that it's their purpose in life, this revolution. These people are all completely unexceptional. Many of them are criminals. They're going nowhere in life. And so they give themselves to these narratives because they believe that it will fulfill them. But now it's getting to a point where their delusion and their insecurity could get someone like you or me killed. And don't get me wrong, we're not gonna stop, ever but it's just something to be aware of. Like the other tweet from the guy said, legalities are immaterial. Any course of action against a fascist is an act of self-defense, not only for yourself, but also for your community. And again, that just means that as long as you can convince yourself that someone is a fascist, whether it's because they like Trump or they don't buy into gender theory or because they have a mug that was inspired by an Alex Jones shit post, well, it's okay for them to die for the greater good of the community. And the community only includes people who align with their worldview. That's what they want. I mean, the guy even said, the shot felt like the beginning of a war. He wanted a war. That's why he reached out to Vice and said, I'll interview with you guys. And then the journalist covering it turned out to be sympathetic towards Antifa. And the guy ended up becoming a martyr, the same martyr that he wanted to be, right? He did that interview to spread his message and he killed the Trump supporter and got himself killed because he wanted to inspire more violence against people like you and me, just regular Americans, people who work hard, people who love their country and who happen to like Donald Trump. Just imagine what they won't actually say into the microphone. Like these media people and these activists, everyone's got things that they won't say into the microphone, right? Like personally, I don't know a whole lot of conservatives, uh, myself included, who withhold a lot of their beliefs since everything that we say can already get us deplatformed. But keep that in mind. When you see these activists who are implicitly calling for violence against us, just imagine what they actually believe. Just imagine what they're not telling you. Do you think that any of them would really be against mass violence against you? The opposition? Like in the revolutions from the past, which they celebrate? Of course not. And we're approaching a very unsettling point where it would seem that we're going to be forced to realize that and the results of that could be severe. So take this as a reminder that the media doesn't care about you, the left doesn't care about you, the government largely doesn't care about you. In fact, they all pretty much hate you. So it is your responsibility to make peace with God and to buy guns and get training and be ready to defend yourself because the probability of you being targeted increases every day and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and of course, 
You know what I'm gonna say, I'm spamming it. I'm spamming it until the fall time. I'm spamming it until the suits come back. Share the video with a friend. That's my favorite. When I wake up in the morning and I see that someone has shared my video, particularly with a friend, it just really just puts a pep in my step for the rest of the day. I'll tell you that right now. It really like counteracts the, the knowledge that people want me dead for like being conservative. It kind of knocks me back into the equilibrium of high energy and epicness at which I like to operate. So I'm just saying, uh, I, I would prefer that you take that course of action, but of, of course it is ultimately your decision. So anyways, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America. 